Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be Masculine Men Keep Women Feminine. So the idea for this particular video topic is something I'm going to expand a little bit more on something that was detailed at length in How to Be a 3% Man, my first book, which you can read for free, understandingrelationships.com. All you got to do is subscribe to the email newsletter. So I was having a phone coaching session with a client the other day, and he's done pretty well dating. He, he moves around a lot. He's basically like a digital nomad. And so he typically has two to three different women that he's dating, and occasionally every few years or so he meets somebody who just really knocks his socks off and he clicks with. And one of them he met a few, a few months back, he, things progressed real well. They met. They were having sex a lot. And then he started caring and got attached. And it's just boom. I mean completely caused the attraction to evaporate because he changed his behavior. And so as I was doing this phone session, it's very it was interesting as he was telling me the story about how they met. That he was at an event similar to the story that I had that I wrote about with my English girlfriend where I was at a Tony Robbins event with locked eyes. I ended up running into her the next night because I didn't get a chance to meet her that night. She was a few rows ahead of me. And then just how things progressed over the course of the week. And so as this guy was pointing out like what he was doing and how his behavior had changed, he was still kind of struggling to understand where he kind of went wrong because he thought he was doing everything right. And that's that's what's so challenging. It's not because the reality is, is that if you're dating a lot, and especially as you're applying the things that are in my book, what you're going to see, there's going to be plenty of women that you're going to meet that you're going to be really attracted to, but you just really don't click with. The conversation doesn't flow. Sometimes you'll meet a woman, you're really physically attracted to her. You enjoy having sex, but you just really don't like hanging out with them. And when you meet somebody that you feel like you kind of known already, like as if you've known each other your whole life, you're completing each other's sentences, you have similar goals, similar values, similar experiences, similar beliefs, similar ways of looking at the world, and you just feel like you just know each other and it's effortless. Those are rare and those are very special. And if you're not used to dating a woman like that or you're just starting to date a woman like that, the old way, the old you starts to show back up because you really like her and you really start to value her. And because you like her more than all the others that you've met, it's going to cause your behavior to change a little bit. Not because you feel you fear losing her. In other words, you get attached. And so my goal with this particular topic is to kind of take you through my experience and this particular guy's experience on because they they match up so well obviously the difference is i i did everything right because by the time this had happened with my english girlfriend i really understood this stuff and it had mastered it and so it was just effortless to do the right thing so i got a quote that i wrote and then i'm going to kind of explain to you what happened with both of our situations because the goal with this video is to help you kind of find the sweet spot to help you find the balance between pursuing, not pursuing enough, being cold fish, being needy and attached and how quickly the attraction will evaporate if you don't have this right. Because it really is a reflection of how you feel about yourself that influences your behavior. It's not so much a technique or what you say, it's the vibe that you give off. And obviously women are very intuitive and they can pick up on this. And it doesn't take much, especially in the beginning to ruin things even if you've been dating and sleeping together for a couple of weeks it can go sideways really quick so the quote says women are like cats and tend to roam free and come and go as they please men who don't understand this try to force manipulate and use logic and reason to influence women to behave more like they want them to this has the opposite effect on women and drives them away much like trying to pick up a cat that no longer wants to be petted. The more you try to force, manipulate, and control women to do what you want, the more they will be repulsed, rebel, and flee from your presence. Therefore, 
Be grateful when they are affectionate and want to be with you and indifferent when they don't. Accept them as they are and let them come and go as they please while you always focus on your mission and purpose in life. Your interest in women has no effect on their attraction towards you. How you make them feel about you is the only thing that matters to influence their attraction to you. The right ones will stay and the wrong ones will stray. So with that said, so this particular guy, he was at a, at a conference, met this woman, made a date with her. It was something I think it was going on for a couple of weeks, this particular event. And so they had a lot of time to see each other and interact with one another. He did everything right. They started hanging out, having fun, hooking up. Things were very effortless. But after about, I think it was the second or, or third week after they had met, if I remember right, things changed a little bit. He noticed like when they were together, it was just the two of them. She was all over him, very affectionate, wanting old hands, wanting to be with him. But when they were out in public, she was kind of indifferent and cold to him and almost treated him like she didn't know him. And obviously that bothered him. And so he started, hey, what's wrong? And asking her questions and it was starting to bother him. In other words, he was starting to lose his shit and instead of being indifferent and understand that women are like cats and they come and go as they please, he started trying to get her to behave the same way in private in public. And so in my experience with my English girlfriend, we had gone on a date and it was just magical. I mean, we time like it seemed like time was standing still, even though hours were fucking zipping by. I think we met at like eight, nine o'clock at night. And at four in the morning, the chairs were all up in the tables and the people were cleaning the floors. And I was like, eh, we probably should go. And we were kissing and making out. And we walked out holding hands. And she was staying at a, at a resort or a hotel, I should say, down the street from the one where the main event was. And I was actually staying at the main event. And I knew, you know, we're going to be there the whole week. So I knew I was going to see her again. And so what's interesting is during that particular event there was another guy that he had i think he was married or i think he was married if i remember right obviously he wasn't in a very happy marriage and over the course of you know she's obviously telling him about me and this connection that we had and he's i don't think that guy is good for you and i think he's just you know using you to get in your pants and you know trying to be mr white knight i'm gonna you know save you from this horrible person that you're you've just met and you know the chemistry that you guys have it's just he's just he's trying to manipulate you and the reality was and it was funny because like, i think it was a night or so after that she's telling me what this guy was saying i was like i said this guy's obviously in an unhappy marriage and he really wants to date you himself and so he's tra- trying to sabotage us and get you to not like me and instead like him even though the fact he's fucking married and so she was laughing about this because she knew that i I was right and obviously she would kind of picked up on that as well herself but that what was going on so i got a guy that's basically trying to rip off the girl that i just met and i had explained to her what was going on and the you know the connection was there so i I wasn't in any way threatened by this this dude because i knew he was acting like a fucking beta male because that's, you know, an alpha male doesn't act like that. And, you know, at the end of the day, he was in a relationship with, with another woman. And so what was interesting is when we were alone at night together, she was all over me, very affectionate. She'd stay in my room. And the next day during the event, she'd see me. She'd come up, hug me. It was not like we're making out passionately. Sometimes we would hold hands. But for the most part, she was completely different in public than she was in private. And I didn't let that bother me because, again, I know women are like cats and they kind of come and go as they please. For me to come unglued and get upset with her because I didn't feel like she's giving me enough affection, I may have felt those impulses, you know, like, hey, that kind of bothers me. She's acting a little different, but I understood why she was behaving the way she was behaving. And so she's just kind of off roaming. There was 3,000 people at this particular event. 
and I didn't let it bother me. I never brought it up, never said anything about it. And then as, you know, by the end of the week, she wanted to be with me all the time. We were holding hands and we would meet people. And they're like, well, how long have you guys been together? Oh, like, oh, we just met a couple of days ago. And so as I gave her that freedom to come and go, and I wasn't in any way threatened by this other beta male that's trying to sandbag me, I was actually laughing at him because he was behaving pathetically. And I explained this to her and I thought it was funny. I wasn't threatened in any way. I gave off no vibe of being threatened in any way and she was laughing along with it and you know she was actually I met this particular guy and I could just tell the way he was looking at me it was it was pissing him off that I was with her and he wasn't and it was obviously driving him nuts and I it was funny to me it didn't bother me one way or another I was completely indifferent to it and therefore that caused her to feel attraction because I was in my masculine because at the end of the day so what if she didn't end up going off with him or some other dude? My attitude was, hey, I'd just find somebody better. And you have to have that kind of attitude. You have to have the attitude of you're willing to lose her forever if she doesn't choose you because you're also bringing something to the table. It's not like, oh, I'm trying to get her attention. I remember I think it was last year or the year before – I was watching, you know, one of the players in the Miami Heat who's since retired this past year, uh, Dwayne Wade. He's married to, what was his name, Gabrielle Union. And somebody had tweeted at him, oh, you're really lucky to have her. And he's like, and he tweeted back to this guy, well, she's lucky to have me too. And that's a healthy way of looking at it. I mean, guy's a three-time NBA champion, multi-multi-millionaire. She's a successful actress, model millionaire herself as well and he had a healthy look at it. he's like yeah i'm awesome but my girlfriend's awesome but i'm awesome too and you want to have or his wife i should say you want to have that kind of an attitude that i'm awesome too i'm a catch as well because if you don't believe you're a catch and the girl you're with starts being kind of cold and different like like this particular client of mine She's off interacting with other people, and he was getting butthurt that she wasn't paying enough attention. I was like, dude, you only knew for like a week or week or two and hooked up with her a few times. She's not your girlfriend. She's not your wife. You don't own her. You don't possess her. He wasn't behaving that way with any of the other girls he had, had been dating and hooking up with, but because he really liked her, he felt threatened, and he felt worried that he was going to lose her. And I told him, I said, you're basically behaving like the guy who's sitting in the chair, cat comes over, hops in your lap, and you're petting it. And then after a while, the cat kind of, you know, likes being petted, but you, if anybody's been around cats, that's kind of their nature. They're like, hey, this has been fun. And they get up and they leave and they go roam somewhere else. And instead of just being totally cool and indifferent, he goes chasing after the cat, which causes the cat to feel like this dude is weird and tries to get get away from you more whereas if he just let the cat go and then gone about his business interacting with other people and laughing half hour hour later whenever the cat's going to come back over and hop up in his lap because he is allowing the cat to come and go as he pleases so he was acting needy he was acting insecure and as he the more he started hey what's going on why, why are you acting different he started giving off the vibe that, in other words, he's coming unglued because she's not paying enough attention to him. And then she starts, to, as she's backing away, and eventually friend-zoned him, said that she only thinks of him as a friend, which her excuse becomes, oh, well, I was dating this guy once, and he kind of became a stalker, and it you know, wasn't a, a good situation, and so I feel really uncomfortable now after everything that, that's happened, and... So in other words, what she was saying is you basically gave off the vibe like a needy, insecure guy that becomes a stalker. That's why women, when it's like they're affectionate, they want to hold your hand. And then, like I talk about in 3% Man, they let go and they go off and do their thing. And you've just got to let them be. That's their way of kind of testing your strength. And they don't do it think, oh, I'm going to test this guy's strength right now. They just don't feel like they want to hold your hand. And you can't be bothered by it. And you can't get upset about it because it will ruin the attraction and 
when a woman picks up on that vibe, she's going to stay away from you more. And in this particular case, the guy didn't do the right thing. He tried to clamp down on her more and control her more to the point where after a couple of weeks of hanging out, having fun and hooking up, she stuck him in friend zone after all that chemistry and everything they had. And so obviously he was pretty bummed about it, but I was like, this is the way life works. This is the way the universe works. You found a chink in your armor and now you have to work on it. And so as I was going through and explaining some of these examples, he's like, oh, he totally saw what he had done wrong and why she had basically disappeared from his life after he's thinking, wow, I met my soulmate. And it doesn't mean these kinds of things are never going to happen again, but obviously you got he's got more work to do on himself. And so next time he meets somebody like that, that he has that kind of chemistry with, he's going to be more apt to let her come and go as she pleases. Because again, when you try to clamp down, she's going to bounce from you. When you let her just go and do what she wants and go roam the neighborhood, she'll come back. And if she doesn't, that's okay too because I'm a fucking catch and I bring a lot to the table. And if somebody doesn't see my value, somebody else will. If you don't think of yourself as having value and you fear losing somebody, you're going to act that way. You're going to give off that vibe and eventually women are going to agree with that. You're you're weird. I got to get away from this guy. They're going to feel unsafe and uncomfortable around you and that is the death to attraction so if you've got a similar situation maybe some of you're dating or in your relationship and you're kind of seeing some of these patterns and you like to get my help so you can kind of fine-tune this so you can maintain your balance and your being centeredness all the time you know, I, I do see occasionally people going what is being centered it means not losing your shit it means not coming unglued it means staying in your masculinity because when this guy was staying in his masculinity, she was purring like a kitten. But soon, soon as he became unsure of himself and indecisive, she became unsure and indecisive. When you're sure of yourself and you're confident, she feels safe and comfortable to submit and let you take the lead. If you act like a woman, she's going to act more like a man and move away because it's going to ruin the sexual polarity. So again, if you'd like to get my help, you've got a similar situation, you can book a coaching session by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen on any page of the website and book a coaching session. And until then, I will talk to you soon. (laughs) 